Hello, before starting this session, I would like to show you some photographs. Between the photograph on the right and the one on the left, which one do you think looks better? You can look at the difference in color and definition. Let's take a look at other photographs as well after looking at it for about five seconds. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, did you get a chance to look at them? The photographs in the top row are JPEG images which are widely used and the photographs on the bottom row are HEIF or HIF images with excellent compression efficiency. You may not notice a big difference in the quality of image of the photographs but you can tell that there is a big difference when it comes down to the file sizes. The file sizes are about two times more different. In general, a HIF image can show the same image quality with a smaller file size than a JPEG image. My name is Sungun Baek and I'm in charge of media technology development on the server side. Using the characteristics of the images I showed you in the previous slides, we came to develop Antman, which reduces the storage capacity, and that is why in this session I'm going to talk in detail about what processes we went through in order to reduce storage. At Line, we have many services beside the messenger service. The media files uploaded to the various services are stored in the um, storage in the OBS. The OBS refers to the internal platform in charge of managing the media files and it stores, processes, and sends and receives the media it handles. Currently, the storage is storing about 60 a terabyte or more and the storage usage is continuing to increase with passing time. The increase in storage usage pushes up operational cost while shrinking the floor space left in the data center. If we calculate the cost of operating 60 terabyte based on the Amazon S3 fee that is widely used, the resulting cost would be approximately uh, $1.4 million per month. And also, if the floor space in the data center becomes scarce, it becomes difficult to increase the number of servers, so this could result in a problem occurring in the service. So an effort to save storage was absolutely necessary. Many services use the storage in the OBS, but we found that Line Album, which is used by many users, took up the most space in the storage. And as is the characteristic of Line Album, most of the images were stored in a JPEG format. So we predicted that if we could change the JPEG file stored in the album to HIF files, we could not only save operational costs, but also secure the floor space in the data center. And from a line user's point of view, because the size of the image file decreased, the user's network usage would decrease. And because the user will be able to view the images faster, the user can expect an improved user experience. So we developed Antman in order to reduce the storage usage. And now let me show you the result. This chart shows the monthly usage of the storage used by the album service. If you take a look at the green line, you can see that from the beginning of 2019 up to June, which was before Antman was impl implemented, the usage and storage continuously increased. But since June of 2019, which is after the Antman was implemented, the storage usage gradually decreased. Without Antman, we believe that the usage and storage would have continued to increase, indicated by the blue line. As of September 2020, we were able to save approximately 21 petabytes in the storage. And now, let me talk about Antman, which was able to reduce the storage to this level. I will first talk about the problems we faced while we were developing Antman, and share the results we achieved through Antman. First topic has to do with image format compatibility. Antman converts the originally saved J JPEG file to HIF file to save storage. And it frees up storage space by deleting the original JPEG file. The HEIF file is an image format that was introduced relatively recently, so this file can be viewed normally only on some devices. For reference, because HIF file has a better compression efficiency compared to a JPEG file, more and more devices support HEIF file. So only HEIF files remain in the storage. In case of device A, which supports HIF file, the image can be viewed normally. 
But in case of device B, which does not support HIF file, the image cannot be viewed normally. So for device B, admin provides a function to restore the HIF file back to the JPEG file. At this time, figuring out the most optimal quality factor is very important. Quality factor is related to the image's quality and its file size. If we set the quality factor to be too low, the file size decreases, but we end up with poor image quality. But if the quality factor is set too high, the image quality will be the same as the original, but we end up with a file size that is too big. That is why we must find the optimal quality factor. So we won't lose the image quality and have the right file size. In the JPEG file structure, the DQT plays the role of a quality factor. So we assume that if we restore the JPEG file from the HIF file and use the DQT in the original JPEG file in its original state, then we will be able to generate a JPEG file with a similar image quality and file size as the original. And because JPEG restoration had to be done in real time every time a request came in from a user, it was difficult to use a complex image quality check method. That is why we started working based on this simple assumption. Now, I'll briefly explain how we use the DQT in the JPEG. In order to use the DQT, we have to create a backup of the DQT in the JPEG when we are converting the original JPEG file to HIF file. So we create a free box in the HIF that will not have any effect in the decoding. And after storing the DQT of the original JPEG in the free box, we complete the conversion to the HIF file. When the request comes in from a device that does not support HIF, um, we used the DQT stored in the HIF to recover the JPEG file. The assumption we made about the DQT that was mentioned before was proven through a test, and you can read the details of the process in the line engineering blog. Next, I will talk about the work that was put in to maintain the image quality when converting images. As previously mentioned, admin convert JPEG files to HIF files to save storage space. Similar to the DQT in the JPEG format, HIF also has a quality factor. And the optimal quality factor has to be found for HIF also to maintain the image quality. As mentioned in the slide before, when converting to a HIF file, the quality factor is related to the image quality and file size. In a similar manner, here we also have to find the quality factor that will keep the file at the right size without damaging the image quality. We attempted several things to achieve this. First, we used a fixed compression ratio of 50% when converting from JPEG file to HIF file. We attempted this because we heard that generally a HIF file can generate the same image quality as a JPEG file only um, at the half the file size. As you can see from the result for everyday photos, the result is overall quite good. But as you can see from this example, when there are many complex patterns in the photograph we and we fix the compression ratio to 50% for the HIF image, then the image quality deteriorates. You can see that deterioration in quality or the noise more clearly when we enlarge the photo. So since this method cannot preserve the image quality, we needed to find another measure to find the right quality factor according to the images. For our second attempt, we try to find the best quality factor by checking the noise in the image using PSNR. And because we also have the function to restore a HIF file back to the JPEG, JPEG file for the devices that do not support HIF, we calculated the PSNR of a total of three images. This method tries to find the best quality factor by calculating the noise level of the three images of image files using PSNR. Here, PSNR is used to determine the level of similarity between two images, and it yields a higher number when the two images are more similar to each other. When we used the PSNR method, we were able to find the appropriate quality factor for most images. But as you can see from the screen, the PSNR was not able to detect the noise occurring in the details. This is because the PSNR calculates the average value for the overall image, so it could not easily detect the noise in the small areas. So as our third attempt, we divide up the area checked by the PSNR to enable sectional detections. 
We divided up the area into large parts at first, then we divided up some more, then some more. The more sections an image was divided up into, the better the noise detection ability became. But this method also had problems. The PSNR was not able to detect the noise between the divided areas. Looking at this page, based on the PSNR measured, it could look as if the noise occurrence within the divided area is not much, but if we measure the PSNR in the area between two divided sections, you can see that the noise in image is quite significant. So we came to the conclusion that calculating the PSNR by dividing up an image into sections will not allow us to check the overall noise level in an image. So the fourth attempt we tried out was to check all of the areas in an image more closely. The box outline, outlined in red represents the area calculated by the PSNR and we call that box window. The window moves by one pixel until it scans the entire image. The result from the image scan by the window is summarized to determine the occurrence of noise in the image. We use the sliding window method in order to find any localized noise in an image. And if you go to the line engineering blog, you can read about how we improved the algorithm of the window to reduce the amount of calculations. Using the method that I have just mentioned, we were able to determine the occurrence of noise. Now the only thing left to do is to find the optimal quality factor so that no, no, no noise would occur. Taking a step-by-step -step look at, at this process first, the initial quality factor is used to check for noise. If no noise is found, the quality factor value is lowered. And when a range causing noise is found, the system tries to find the range of quality factor that does not cause noise while narrowing down the range. Finally, once the quality factor range is not causing noise is found, then the value that falls within this range 5 becomes the optimal quality factor. This chart shows how big a HIF file is compared to the original JPEG file in percentages. By testing the various images I have shown in the previous slides and using the processes that I have explained earlier, we found out that we were able to make HIF files only 30 to 40% the size of its original JPEG files. Initially, we predicted that we could convert JPEG to HIF, we would be able to reduce the files down by 50%. However, through the processes of finding the sliding window and quality factor, the compression rate for each photography, uh, pho photograph may be different, but on average, we were able to reduce the images by about 65%. For the next part, I will talk about the operation cost of Antman. Antman uses G GPU to carry out JPEG transcoding, HIF transcoding, and detecting quality loss. It uses GPU because the huge amount of images stored in the line album must be converted into HIF in a short period of time. Line album has been in service for over 7 years and approximately 60 million images are uploaded a day and images with up to 4 um, case resolution are saved. And in order to convert a JPEG image to HIF, hundreds of times the amount of computation was required compared to just saving in JPEG. Purchasing an expensive GPU equipment did not fit the purpose of the project, which was to reduce the expense for the storage system. We tried to think of a different solution. So we shared the GPU equipment used in another project and tried to reduce the operating cost of Antman. Lion's video transcoder uses a GPU server to process large volumes of video. And the traffic inflow differs according to time and it operates the number of GPU servers required to handle the maximum number of traffic. Antman's transcoder monitors the GPU server status and the traffic in real time and automatically searches for GPU servers that can be borrowed. When the inflow of traffic to the transcoder decreases and the time comes when GPU server can be rented, Antman temporar temporarily rents the transcoder's GPU. Then when the transcoder needs the GPU server again, the Antman server group returns the GPU server it has rented. In this manner, the GPU server automatically shifts its function according to the transcoder's traffic condition. As you can see from this graph before sunrise, Antman uses the GPU server most of the time, but when the line services are actively in use, the transcoder uses the GPU servers. By borrowing the GPU servers and not buying them, the operating cost of Antman 
became zero. For the last part of my presentation, I'm going to talk about the results. Looking at the graph showing line albums usage of storage once more, since Antma started in June of 2019, by May 2020, we were able to process all of the images stored throughout the previous seven years through Antman, and since then, you can see that the storage capacity is gradually increasing. Starting out in June 2019, as of September 2020, we were able to save 21 petabyte. And calculating the storage uh, operation cost for September 2020 using Amazon F3 fee as the standard, we are expected to have saved approximately $470,000 per month through Antman. Storage operating cost incur monthly. So if we calculate the cumulative cost saved so far, that would be about $2 million saved. And we expect the cumulative cost saved will increase as time passes. As we have saved storage space by converting JPEG files to HIF, we are thinking about applying a similar measure for videos with large volumes. We hope to reduce the storage as much as possible by advancing the Antman technology. Thank you for viewing my session.